This video is about one of the very important institutions in the implementation of, of trade policy in the United States, which is the U.S. International Trade Commission. Now it says International Trade Commission, which some people think is, it means that it's some sort of uh, international body, but it's very much a domestic uh, institution, uh, very much um, under the watchful eye of the, uh, of the U.S. Congress. The Congress has delegated a number of important tasked to the ITC um, over the years, and I want to talk a, a little bit of, uh, about them. Uh, so uh, first, uh, a little bit of information about the background and structure of, of uh, the ITC, which it's often known by. So this goes back to the early part of the 20th century, where uh, there was an attempt to in part depoliticized some tariff policy at the time, where the U.S. Tariff Commission, as it's called then, was established by Congress to act as a, a neutral investigative arm to uh, evaluate the impact of changing tariffs on the, uh, on the U.S. economy. So it, it's played that investigative role really right from the beginning, as a, again, as an independent, uh, independent body. Now, there's six commissioners. Uh, that all each serves nine years, that can't be renewed, and that no more than three of these commissioners can be from a single political party. So I mention this because it, there's really an attempt to make the ITC uh, independent and uh, able uh, and, and able to uh, avoid political influence because as we're going to see they. They have a an important role in in determinations of of, of, of importance in the U.S. Uh, trade system, and the Congress has set them up to be independent from both congressional pressure and presidential pressure and industry pressure for that uh, for that matter. Now there are uh, a couple of important roles that they play. Uh, one is in both anti-dumping. and uh, countervailing duty investigations, which I've got separate videos uh, about that, where uh, the ITC will be the U.S. agency that investigates the presence of material injury to a domestic industry as a consequence of either dumped foreign goods or subsidized foreign goods, subsidized by a foreign, uh, foreign government. So the, the ITC is looking at the internal impact on domestic industries from this, uh, from this trade. As a consequence in trying to uh, determine whether or not there's material injury, uh, which is kind of loosely defined, but it's basically uh, impact on a, a domestic firm or domestic industry that involves falling employment or falling sales, falling profit, falling, falling investment, various uh, indicators of distress in the industry. And they do this by sending out questionnaires to domestic firms that are in the industry subject to one of these anti-dumping and countervailing duty. Uh, investigations and the ITC, the commissioners will take a uh, a look at the information assembled by the uh, by the um, by the staff, and then make a determination whether or not there's evidence that there's material injury. So if uh, three people, three of the commissioners vote yes, and three of the commissioners vote no, a tie goes to the domestic complainant about the foreign uh, about the foreign practices. Now, the ITC doesn't have anything to do with determining the dumping margin or the subsidy margin. That take place, takes place over at the uh, U.S. Department of Commerce. But so the ITC is making uh, uh, this, this decision looking at domestic data. They also have an analogous role in safeguard investigations. Now, these are the more general uh, protection uh, actions against the whole industry, um, for the whole industry, whether or not they've been dumped or subsidized, 
this, so here the ITC is looking at so-called serious injury to a domestic uh, industry, which is a higher standard, a higher level of, uh, of distress, and once again, they do an investigation about the, uh, or they collect information about the uh, state of the domestic industry, then we'll make a determination whether there's evidence that this sort of type of distress is occurring. And in this case, they make a recommendation, that is if they find a uh, serious injury, they make a recommendation uh, to the president about what to do about it. Now if they find no serious injury, it's done. If they find serious injury, then they've got to make a suggestion of, say, 30% tariffs or a quota or some sort of activity. Um, but they're, in, in a sense, more intimately involved in, in the safeguard cases because they're making recommendations uh, directly uh, to the president. There are also a variety of investigations that come from Congress or the President on international trade issues. So let's say a member of Congress uh, is concerned about the level of restrictions on U.S. imports to India. The ITC is, has, will be asked to provide a report to Congress to take a look at this uh, issue. So this is a formal request from Congress, and the ITC staff will take a look at this. They're, they're professional economists and, and investigators. will take a look at this issue. Um, they also will sometimes uh, do studies uh, on the, the impact of a, free, uh, of a trade agreement on the U.S. economy. So if there were a com uh, completion of the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, uh, agreement with countries of the Pacific Rim, the ITC would be the group that would take a look at a serious study about what they think the impact of that agreement would have on U.S. industries, on consumers, on workers, and various aspects. So they, uh, I think that this, these examples show that the ITC is very much considered a straight shooter and capable of doing sophisticated analysis that plays an important role in statutory, statutorily granted um, responsibilities in these uh, injury investigations, but also on potentially politically sensitive subjects for policy going forward. So the ITC will do these investigations. Now in a separate video I'm going to be talking about uh, computable general equilibrium models. Which is a critical tool that the ITC uses to undertake many of these investigations. So it's a, a pretty specialized um, skill set that they have that they can use to uh, uh, conduct these investigations. Two final activities of the ITC. One are so-called 337 investigations. And these are instances where a domestic firm says that a foreign firm is violating a U.S. patent on imports coming into the United States. And the ITC is a venue where they can actually ban the importation of a product uh, if a U.S. patent is being violated. So this has become more important in recent years. Uh, for example, there have been a whole series of, uh, of these 337 investigations involving Apple and Samsung on smartphones, and the ITC is in the middle of that, where they're, again, a uh, sensitive issue, commissioners taking a look at this from an impartial standpoint. Um, it's a kind of, I think it's pretty clear for a number of these 
uh, activity, certainly these three, it's a kind of quasi-judicial body. They're making judgments as an impartial arbiter uh, of, these, uh, of these subjects. So the final thing is a tariff and trade database publicly available from the ITC. So, for example, if you wanted to find out what the tariff rate is for any country for a very particular product, a very narrow product, the place you would go is the ITC's website and they have a tariff database. You put in the harmonized system code into that and they'll give you that information. So it's it really is the 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 group that, that collects and and disseminates information about very detailed uh, tariffs uh, in place on, on US products. They also have a trade database uh, which allows you to do a similar type of search for the particular amount of goods coming in from any country for a very, very narrowly defined uh, product down to the 10-digit HS category. And that's, that's, that's really, that's as detailed of uh, data as you can get uh, from, uh, from, the, from, from uh, any uh, publicly available source. So, uh, for people doing uh, trade research uh, on U.S. tariffs or trade, trade flows, imports and exports, now this is of goods, they don't really do this on services, but on goods, and this again is for U.S. free trade agreement partners or those subject to a, a, a preferences regime like GSP or the you know, Caribbean Basin Initiative, the ITC is the place to go. They have uh, uh, really the best information out there. So, um, an organization that's often not in the in the news, but plays a very important role in in trade policy in the United States.